Rival coaches Alan Jeans and Mickey Malthouse have played their parts in football history. Jeans, the Hawks' 1983 BFL Premiership coach, will always be remembered for guiding St Kilda to its first flag back in 1966. Maltas, now the supremo at Footscray, was a dominant player in Richmond's... Way to go. Yeah, I think the Sims it up pretty well. Three quarters to go, but the Bulldogs by ten points. Ken, uh, Williams two and Sewell one. Their goal kickers, Bertie has one for Hawthorne. Umpire Glenn James starts proceedings now in the second quarter of the third quarter final of the Sterling Cup from VFL Park. Footscray 3-2, leading Hawthorne 1-4 as we begin the second stanza of the game. In ruck for Hawthorne, McCarthy now having a run on the ball. Byrne did most of their ruck work during the first quarter. He's contesting with Alistair Ford. Knocked down by McCarthy, who didn't do a bad job on Saturday too, incidentally, when he was on the ball. McPherson's kick for Footscray up to half forward in the road. One of the favourites for the Brownlow, Chris Mew. Out to Loveridge. And he gets bowled over well and truly by uh, Cordy. And that didn't do his hand any good. It's just what he's holding at the moment. He's in all sorts of trouble, Richard Loveridge. And that will certainly delay his comeback. I think the senior football, he doesn't look too good at all. Up the right half forward for the Bulldogs. All right uh, half forward for Hawthorne. Taken for Footscray down there by uh, Baxter. Green is there. Green and Deepia Domenico. Picked up by Deepia Domenico. Hawthorne's only goal kicker so far. Curran is the flyer. Good mark. I think he might have been winded. I'm not quite sure, Pete. I think so. He's, Took uh, his breath. He got him on the side. What in the solos though, I'd reckon, Bob, wouldn't you? It's when the trainer says, breathe in and you can't breathe at all. That's right. <laughs> yeah, they say, breathe deeply. You can't even get your breath. Saying he's OK certainly stung him tonight. So Kip, <laughs> Kevin Curran. This not played for a while. Peter Curran. <laughs> Still a great name down at Hawthorne, but... And a great player. Curran now, about 45 to 50 metres out. A long kick may just get the distance. It's gone through, I think, for one behind. It has. And so that makes the difference now nine points at the one and a half minute mark of the second quarter. One five to three two. Hawthorne wasting a few opportunities up forward, but that has been caused in the main by some good tackling by Footscray. Not just on the back line, but all over the ground. Ford is the flyer at the back, doesn't take the mark. McCarthy in front does best, or does better. From left half forward, looking for Byrne, playing in the forward pocket at the moment. He can't take the mark. Snapshot for goal by Curran is uh, also off target, and that's through for one behind. And that makes the difference now eight points at the two-minute mark. Yes, three goals, two, 20 foot square to Hawthorne, one goal, six, 12 points. Hawthorne bombarding the goal in the second quarter, but uh, still kicking points. It goes out wide, a chance for McCarthy at the back, knocked it away from Ford, picked up by Egan. Callot comes in to meet it for Footscray, got the run, he's tripped. Umpire spotted that against Curran, doesn't hesitate, decides to play on. Now he boots the ball up to the half forward line and a good mark to Sewell and he's looking pretty well at the moment. Goes for a pass out wide. It'll be a mark and Footscray are looking good as we see the ball taken there by Bennett. Bennett's kick is up towards the goals now. Players set themselves. The ball hits the deck as they go for Gorazide. It's a snap at goal but it won't come around enough and I think it's out of bounds. Yes, right against the point post there'll be a free kick to swab down there in the back pocket. They're looking a lot better up forward than uh, Hawthorne at the moment, uh, Bob. They're looking very dangerous, uh, Lou. Sewell's uh, doing a fine job across the half-forward line. And the rest of their forwards are moving and uh, making a space, giving them something to kick to. Ball hit out again. Comes back to Howard. He gives a hand pass out, but picked up by Atkins. He was grabbed, but finally Ford tries to get clear. In goes Atkins again. He's not frightened, that young kid. He has a go. Ford goes down. Got one on the head. Finally picked up by McPherson, out it goes wide and a snap there by Hicks up towards the goals. Punched out by O'Halloran, Gorazidis goes in again, he goes down, he got into his back, I think he'll get a free kick. Might have been a little bit lucky, he fell at the uh, the right time I would say and he's got the free kick about 30 metres out from goal. Now watch again on replay, uh, he did uh, get one too high, it was a bit of a technical one, he was already on his way down but nonetheless he did cop one too high. Well Gorazidis... We mentioned before, kicked six goals after half-time in the reserves match uh, last Sunday, which is telecast uh, live on Channel 7. The kick by Gorazidis from about 20 metres out on a slight angle. And it's through for one point. So he was off target. He's kicked uh, at the moment two points. 
Hasn't scored a goal yet. Three goals, 3.21. Foots greater Hawthorne, one goal, 6.12 points. Chris Mew chips the ball back up to Loveridge, who seems to have recovered from that rather heavy knock. Got Loveridge from the back pocket trying to find Polkinghorne, playing behind Williams. Ford fumbles over the top, Polkinghorn. Umpire Glenn James has decided, I think, wisely on a bounce. And that bounce will take place. Left half-back flank for Hawthorne. Four and a half minutes. So, beat Young Hack certainly not overawed by the occasion. Certainly no. not. He's playing a pretty strong game. He's a goer too, isn't he? Might be after all that uh, rough stuff in Ireland. This is probably uh, kindergarten stuff to him. After what Don Scott was telling me, the ball picked up by uh, Ross for Footscray. Mew overruns the ball. Langford, a hurried hand pass taken by O'Halloran. Down to half forward for the Bulldogs, taken by Sewell. Sewell fires out the hand pass. Here's a chance for Cordy. Cordy a pass on to Gorozaitis and he's marked in the forward pocket. Gorozaitis looking very dangerous down there. He's scouting out nicely at, the, at this particular stage of the match, Peter. Thank you, Lou. So Gorozaitis right on the boundary line. Plenty of light between the posts as Bennett makes a lead. Former St Kilda teammate now Con decides to run around. A right foot snapshot and what's he done with it? It's through for one behind. So I think that makes three behind. He's kicked so far Gorozaitis. Five and a half minutes gone. Footscray is still by 10 points. Yes, three goals, 422. Footscray to uh, Hawthorne, one six, 12 points. The ball back into play again. Ford having a battle there. Beat uh, McCarthy. Tapped it back, but it's finally picked up by Mew. Over the head of the pack. Morrissey got into uh, his opponent's uh, back that time. Baxter, Baxter boots it back. And there's the young fella again, Atkins. I think he's had about uh, four or five possessions since he started. So... It's a good debut by this young fellow. The ball goes out wide. They all fly and the ball is finally knocked out of bounds. On Footscray's half fourth on about 70 metres around from their goal. Waiting there for the umpire to throw the ball back into play. Into this quarter, the second quarter of the third quarter final of 1984 for the Sterling Cup by about uh, six and a half minutes. Picked up by Sewell. Ball tapped out by Howland, backs up well, taps it over to uh, Di Pietromenico. He lost that. Morris has grabbed too high on the shoulder, and Morris will take a free kick. Footscray are not messing about. They're going in pretty hard, Bob. Yes, well, it's the way they've got to do. They've got to take the game right up to uh, Hawthorne, and that's exactly the way that they've started right throughout this uh, first quarter and a bit. There's uh, Gorazitis going for a long hand pass to Sewell. Sewell steps around Morris quite easily, a snap at goal, but he won't make the distance. Polkinghorne intercepts, Williams is there too. Kicked off the ground by Polkinghorne, but it hit uh, Hicks's boot, I think, and an out of bounds on the foot, and it'll be a penalty free kick down there to Hawthorne. So into this quarter by uh, just over seven minutes, it's ten points the difference in favour of Footscray. Ford goes the big punch. Atkins couldn't pick that up, but he won't give it to anyone else. He finally tries to get it out to Sewell. Green comes in nicely. And by golly, what a player this fellow's been since he switched over to uh, uh, from St Kilda to Hawthorne. Baxter goes high. Couldn't hold the mark. Morrissey shakes it off him. But there's a chance now for Footscray to get the ball out through Lunn. Out wide to Cordy there at half back. Cordy's kick is a short one. It'll be OK. And there's the boy we were talking about, Atkins. So he'd be pretty uh, happy about his uh, performance so far. The kick to Bennett. Couldn't hold that. But the umpire said it'll have to go back. Free kick to Hawthorne for whatever reason, I'm not well, too sure. it wouldn't have been Atkins' fault because he was clear of that. You got me, Bob. Couldn't pick that one up at all. Must have been behind the play. Green at right centre wing. Drives Hawthorne into attack, trying to find Robertson. Too long for him. Egan backing up well. He goes right across the ground. It bounces over the head of McPherson. That didn't help him much, but McPherson doing a good shepherd down there for uh, Ross. At right half-back flank, gets Footscray out of the danger zone, long clearing kick. In fact, it's over the centre line, and it'll be a mark or free kick to Morris of Hawthorne. Russell Morris, did originally a, from Sydney. Did a fair job Saturday on Vanderhaar too, uh, Peter. Yes, he got a lot of kicks. Vanderhaar took a few marks, but it was a good effort. He's off. McCarthy has to go for a hurried hand pass. On to Green. Green to Polkinghorn. Polkinghorn onto Loveridge. Loveridge from half forward. Steady shoots at goal. Hawthorne have only got one so far and there's not going to get one there. It's touched through for one behind. And that takes their total to one goal, seven. They still trail by nine points. Of that seven though, Pete, uh, three have been punched through by Footscray. Nine minutes gone. Second quarter. Third quarter final of the Sterling Cup. McCarthy is the flyer over the top of Ford. Neither completes the mark. Ball shot out to uh, Considine. He has a shot at goal in towards full forward. Again, touched. It won't even be a score, though. A chance for Flintoff on the boundary line. A snapshot. 
is close. Oh. That's not a bad goal if it's there. It's through. We've seen a whole lot of that was Flintoff's first goal. Three points the difference now as the ball comes back to McPherson and Polkinghorne. McPherson in front. Can't complete the mark. Good tackle by Green and the hurried hand pass goes back to Atkins again. He overruns the ball on this occasion. Gronewegen. The ball tapped on though and a chance for Footscray's Wallace to shoot out the short pass which he does towards right half forward. The Bulldogs swing into attack through Ross. He's gone for a short pass to Gorazidis and he takes the mark. Looking good, Gorazidis. He's the danger player. They've got to watch down there, that Hawthorne defence. Yes, I think you might find Langford uh, taken away from Gorazidis. Even though he hasn't uh, kicked uh, any goals to date. Oh, oh uh, three beauty. Williams, though. He tried to uh, put that one through himself. I don't know whether he anticipated Williams taking that mark. Let's say it was a trick kick, Bob. He's, uh, Williams has got the goal. Yes, that's all that matters. And uh, we watch again as Gorazidis puts the short kick into that uh, goal square and Williams very quick to put his third goal through. But uh, Gorazidis, uh, although he hasn't kicked goals himself, he's got three points on the board. And uh, the same as uh, Taylor and uh, Matthews the other week, Lou. It's no good waiting until they put the goals up. That's right. You've got to move a meal in the piece. It's not Russian roulette. The ball's knocked out by Ford. Oh, going through that time was Gronerweg. It's Cossadine getting the ball now. Going for a long kick down there towards the full forward position. McCarthy, try, Curran tries to get in front track, uh, tries to scoop it out. But the ball finally pushed out by Egan. The umpire said he was tripped. And Egan will take the free kick down there in the back pocket. Just over the 11 and a half minute mark. It's Footscray four goals, 4.28 to Hawthorne, 2.7.19. And Footscray looking a lot better now as the ball goes up towards the wing position. Umpires found a free kick. He's called play on. As we see the ball kicked up there by uh, Morris. Morris's kick is over centre half forward. A chance now for it to go up to the full forward position. Oh, there's a battle going on. Finally picked up by Robertson. But the umpires found a free kick. It'll go to Callot down there at full back. Callot's kick is out towards Wallace. Coming at the back as Morris, he got into his back. Morris, he's got the run here if he can pick it up. Went without the ball. In goes Wallace again. He's a real derrier. And the umpire will ball it up on that Footscray half-back line about 70-odd uh, metres out from the Hawthorne goal. 28 points, Footscray to Hawthorne, 19 points. The Hawks in a bit of bother at the moment. Footscray carrying on from last uh, Saturday when they defeated Geelong. The ball tapped on by Considine. Finally, it comes out to Morris. His kick is a short one. It'll be OK. And it's marked there by Roberts. And a quick hand pass to Flintoff, who kicked that magnificent goal before. Down there, punched away that time by Byrne. But backing up well is the ever-reliable uh, Egan. Couldn't get the hand pass out too well. Finally, it's Foster getting it over to Ross on the boundary line. And Ross's kick is back towards the wing position. Coming out to meet it now is McCarthy. But he fumbles, and the ball is out of bounds. Foster doing a fine job at centre-half. Back against Tuckloop. Yes, he is. Nine points, the difference in favour of Footscray. 4-4 four, four, plays 2-7. Williams has three of those goals for Footscray. No move yet by Alan Jeans to shift Langford away from Gorosidis, though. He's done a lot of useful work, although he hasn't kicked goals down at full forward. Taken by Polkinghorne from centre wing. His kick up to half forward. Ball knocked back into the square. Wallace and DP at Domenico. Wallace gets there first with better pace. Looks for a hand pass. Taken by Ford. Ford from just wide of the circle, put Footscray into attack up towards centre half forward. That's a good mark taken down there by Bennett. Too fast for O'Halloran. Bennett hooks it back to the full forward position. Gorazidis this time can't complete the mark. It rebounds to Langford. Oh, <laughs> Considine get a mark and a free kick. And probably a 15 metre penalty. No, says uh, Lynn James. Considine plays on instead. Gets it back to centre field. It's all Footscray down there. Good tackle by Morrissey. The ball rebounds to Baxter on centre wing for Hawthorne is Schwab. He slips over at the crucial moment, almost caught with the ball. Chance for Birdie again. The ball knocked out to Robertson. Robertson from right half forward. A short pass. Kevin in the road though. Too tall for Morrissey and takes the mark. Kennedy tells him to play on, which he does. Oh, bad hand pass. Egan in trouble. Scoots it back though to, to uh, Kennedy. And Tuck takes the mark right half forward flank for Hawthorne. It's a long way from goal. Tuck, but like Williams for Footscray, probably the best kick in his side. Tuck now, long kick into the goal square. Magnificent kick from Michael Tuck. And just off the hands of the pack, and that's about the fourth time that's happened tonight. 
and it's through for one behind. 2-8 to 4-4. Four, four. Footscray lead by eight points. Footscray defence standing up pretty well, uh, Robert. If they took a risk, though, with that handball, Lou, it's uh, sort of unnecessarily play that applies pressure to yourselves if it doesn't come off. Finally, the ball comes out here now. A chance for McCarthy to scoot around the pack. He gives the hand pass back to Howard. Back to McCarthy again. Another one over to Polkinghorne at centre half foot. A long shot at goal. Will he make the distance? Ball punched on again. Scouting out as Egan. He backs back into trouble. Tries to get away again. He's on the boundary line. Can't get clear. They pounce on him. Tuck intercepts. Taps the ball back looking for Curran, but it's out of bounds as we see Kellett go over the line. So it's out of bounds in the forward pocket about 20 metres around from the Hawthorne goal. And they're trailing by eight points at the minute. We're just over the 15 and a half uh, minute mark of this quarter. As we see Williams gets a hurried kick back again. At the back was Constantine. Couldn't hold the mark. Goes after it again on the boundary line. They have a running left foot snap at goal. Into the goal square. But a good mark taken there by Kennedy. As I said before, they're standing up to the pressure pretty well. That uh, foot's great offence. Over the top of the pack, McPherson goes the tap on. Oh, in a bit of trouble that time as it comes back to McPherson again. But there's little Hicks coming in to pick it up away from Polkinghorne out there on the centre wing position. Now Footscray go back into attack through Gorazitis. Picks it up beautifully. A hand pass back to Hicks, but it's too strong and long. Finally picked up by Mew. A long kick back towards the wing position. Considine's got the mark out there at half forward. Mew on Gorazitis now too, Lou. Well, they'll have to do something about him because he's looking good. And this is a very fast game here tonight. Plenty of pace on as it goes up there towards the full forward position. The ball tapped away from Curran. Finally, it's picked up by Tucker. Snap at goal, but uh, Tuck is off target and through for another point. So it's seven points the difference. And we're just over the, or just on the 17 minute mark. It's two goals, 9 21. Uh, Hawthorne to Footscray, four goals, 4 28. Egan loops the ball back into play for Footscray, looking for Cordy. Cordy and Schwab, neither can take the mark. Williams backs up his teammate, a chance for Flintoff on the boundary line, but it's a Hawthorne free kick. The decision is in the back of the Schwab. He's gone on to Polkinghorne, one of Hawthorne's busiest players so far. Not a long kick. Curran takes the mark about 35 to 40 metres out from goal. So Peter Curran, pretty well directly in front. Hawthorne's accuracy, though, uh, letting them down so far was 2-9. Can Curran improve upon that? It looks OK from here. That's Hawthorne's third goal. It's a point the difference now at the 18 minute mark of the quarter, two minutes before uh, before half time. No time on, of course, in the opening two terms. And taken for Footscray down there by Lunn. Lunn from left half back flank looks out there for Gronewegan. Can't find him. The ball out of bounds. It just bounced about oh, half a metre inside the line. And so we'll see a throw in on centre wing. Ford doing the ruck work for Footscray. McCarthy for Hawthorne. Gee, Peter Minnick looks a bit sore out there too, Pete. Knocked down to Cordy. Picked up out there by Little Hicks. Goes along the boundary line and Howard just gets it as it rolls over the line and so we'll see a boundary throw in. Yes, he looks a bit proppy birdie, doesn't he? You win him and wear him, I think. I'll lead him on Saturday against Melbourne. One of the games of the round you'll see on Seven's Big League, of course. And the umpire has found a free kick. It's going to uh, Hawthorne's McCarthy from right back pocket. McCarthy gets it up to centre wing. Ford in front, too tall and marks. Good mark to uh, Ford. We're just on the 19 minute mark. It's still a point the difference in favour of Footscray. Umpire's calling it back for Ford to kick over the mark. Well, if Footscray can get a, a goal here in this last uh, 40 odd seconds, well, they'll make it pretty hard for the uh, Hawks coming to the second half. Every second means something at this stage, and they must get it down in a hurry. Ball up towards the half-forward line. Oh, that's uh, Langford flying over the top of Grunewagen that time and takes a good mark out there at half-back. The kick by uh, Langford is back up there towards Tuck. Foster goes the punch. Oh, there's nearly a mark there to Ford again. That's two good marks he's taken. Ford goes for left footer out towards the wing position. Coming out to meet it as Atkins picks it up on the first bounce. He's gone for a hand pass back to Foster. Foster's kick is over the half forward line, but McCarthy's got no problem there taking that mark. Hand pass back to Polkinghorne. Over a little Loveridge. who seems to recover from that uh, little knock he got before. Picked up by Russell Green, but there's the siren around the second quarter of the third uh, quarter final of the Sterling Cup for 1984. It's Footscray, four goals, 4.28 to uh, Hawthorne, 3.927. 
Well, we must admit, Bob, that the Footscray defence stood up very well. They were very solid. They knocked the ball on, and uh, I think about four times they saved a goal down there. And also their attack looks good. Uh, well uh, handled there by Gorazitis and Sewell. Yes, young Baxter there on uh, camera now had, had good support from uh, the last line of defence with Egan, Kellett and Kennedy. Foster at centre half back uh, held uh, Tuck under good uh, restraint. And uh, Neil Cordy on top of Di Pietromenico. Good support from Wallace and Ross. Sewell and Williams fine half forward flankers with Gorazidas and Bennett very active up on the forward line as you said. So it was a good performance and not to, to forget uh, Ford as a ruckman. Uh, he did his work although McCarthy has been a good player for Hawthorne. Falkinghorn coming down the ground. Uh, Mew now at full back. Langford out at centre half back. Uh, Mew going on to Gorazidas who was running Langford around a fair bit. But um, Hawthorne gradually uh, regaining a little bit of composure but Footscray taking it right up to them all the way. Uh, young Atkins, of course, doing a good job in his first game and uh, showing the talent that uh, everybody has said he had. The Bulldogs were the first team to venture to Adelaide earlier in the season and play under the new lights at Football Park. With Brian Boyle, Jim Sewell and Mark Kellett in fine form, the Bulldogs defeated Neil Curley's West Adelaide by 27 points. Good evening. It's great to have you back for Punchlines. Richmond's search for a rover and a runner is on in earnest. The Tigers have cast an eye over Adrian Batterston of Melbourne. Chris Burton of Footscray and the Essendon pair, Mark Eustace and Tony West. They are ready to bargain and I can see some business being done over the next week. I know the Bombers are keen on Brian Whitten, but the Demons are looking with admiring eyes at another tall young Tiger. Geelong's captain, Michael Turner, who broke the VFL's code of silence after Jacko's report on Saturday, is in trouble with the league. General Manager Jack Hamilton will be contacting Geelong about Turner's remarks and the Cats could be liable to a fine of up to $2,000. A lot of information has been creeping out about task force submissions, but I have heard one that is very, very interesting. Double headers on the day the Swans play in Melbourne. It's sound thinking too. Two games at one of the big arenas would certainly attract bumper crowds. St Kilda faces its crisis day on June 28, and already greedy clubs are licking their lips and sizing up the players that might come on the market if the Saints go under. There is even a preference list that goes this way. Greg Burns, Jeff Cunningham, Tony Lockett, Robert Elphingston and Paul Morwood. I just hope the Saints stay afloat. VFL fundraising has reached what could only be described as the bottom of the barrel. The Magpies later in the year are planning to have a competition on naming these two backsides in their hunky calendar. Old Jock McKay would probably turn in his grave to see how cheeky his club has become. But tradition does live on in other clubs. This one is a famous one for it. When Hawthorne put their battle uniforms out for airing before a big match, the numbers run this way. Number one, Ken Judge. Number two, Chris Mew. Number three, Lethal Lee. Number four, Peter Russo. And then number six for Rod Lester Smith. Number five is missing and has been since 1977 in memory of the Hawks' famous little blonde, Peter Crimmins, who died September 28, 1976. The number has been retired for a special reason. Yes, well, Tony Ferrugia is the football manager here at Hawthorne. And, Tony, could you tell me the reason, the real reason why number five is missing from anywhere about here? Yes, Scott, uh, number five has been wrested right from our junior uh, development squad and the Crimmins squad to our under-19s to our senior list. And that came about uh, from a senior board decision in 1976 when Peter passed away that, uh, in, in tribute to Peter, that the best and fairest trophy would be named after him, the Peter Crimmins trophy, and also that the number five Guernsey would be rested uh, to uh, commemorate Peter, who was such a great, inspiring player here at Hawthorne for 11 years. Um, and hopefully, one day, uh, that number will be handed down to one of his children, Ben or Sam. And here are the two Crimmins boys. Ben 12, who was mascot for Pizza Hole School, Assumption in the Herald Shield at VFL Park in their last match. And Sam, only eight, but have a look at the family resemblance, the hair and the determination. And this is the famous number five that their dad wore during the 1960s, that the two boys had their end. The Hawks' first premiership captain, Graham Arthur, played 23 night games, a record he holds with his former Victorian teammate, Rue John Dugdale. Full forward John Peck is up there too. He played 20 times in the old series at South. In the goal kicking, Peter Hudson heads the list with 60, Peck kicked 44, and current champ Lee Matthews is still in there with 34. 
Peck, Arthur, Hudson and Matthews, giants of the game. And tonight the tradition continues with the 1984 Sterling Cup. Rufel Park, we're waiting the arrival of Hawthorne. The umpires are back. We'll have uh, the opportunity, I think, of looking at some of the highlights <coughs> of the first half and get some comments from Bob and Luke. Yes, well, early in the piece, uh, Di Pietromenico with a lovely goal, but I thought that uh, as the game progressed, Neil Cordy did a fine job against uh, Di Pietromenico and probably had the better of him. Ian Williams with three goals, uh, one a lovely kick, and uh, Williams a very dangerous player. Gorazidis getting the ball out to Sewell, and those three forwards, uh, the three men mainly responsible for the fact that Footscray at the moment uh, hold a one-point lead. Uh, Hawthorne battled hard to come back. A bad mistake by young Russell Morris there, enabling Williams to have a couple of bounces and steady. And, uh, finish it off in fine style. It's amazing how often after a player's had a couple of bounces that he doesn't quite finish it off. But Flint off now, a miraculous goal, snapping over the shoulder. And uh, he really brought Hawthorne back with that fine piece of roving. But once again, Williams, the short kick in from Gorazides, and three very smart goals to Gorazides. Kicks in favour of Footscray by Williams, 10. I should say, Pete. Uh, the marks in favour of Footscray by 7. The free kick's just about even. Handball's in favour of Hawthorne by 13. And Hawthorne winning their hitouts by 4. And the Hawks leading shots at goal by 3. Bob, I should imagine that the Bulldogs would be pretty pleased with the uh, performance of young uh, Atkins uh, here tonight, oh, too. There'd be no doubt about that, Lou. Uh, more by the way he's gone about it than uh, just with the number of kicks that he's had. player that uh, plays the most outstanding game of the series in the Sterling Cup is in for a great prize.